Hello, and welcome to Bonding Mechanics for Lifting. My name is Amanda France, and this is my associate, Rachel Partner. We are graduate occupational therapy students from Alverna University. According to the American Occupational Therapy Association, occupational therapy, or OT, is a client-centered healthcare profession that assists individuals to participate in meaningful and purposeful activities of daily life as independently as possible. OTs work in a variety of settings and with individuals of all ages. Keeping this in mind, today we will be discussing what exactly body mechanics are and how they apply to proctor lifting techniques. These techniques can and should be used by everyone, not just OTs, in order to prevent back injuries or issues later on in life. First things first, what exactly are body mechanics? Body mechanics is the study of human movement using kinetics and kinematics. Kinematics and kinetics may sound like similar terms, but they're not. Kinematics is the geometry of movement and includes movement without considering the source of the movement. Kinetics, on the other hand, is the discipline of engineering and biomechanics that considers the effects of forces acting on a person, object, or system. Here is a list of terms often used in body mechanics. Displacement is described as distance with a direction. Velocity refers to the distance an object moves in a certain amount of time. Acceleration is how quickly or slowly an object can increase in speed. Force refers to the mass of an object times the acceleration. Mass is the physical property of matter that gives it weight and inertia. Moment of force refers to the distance times time formula. Weight is calculated by taking the mass times the force of gravity. And finally, momentum of an object is calculated by taking the mass times velocity. So, why are body mechanics so important while lifting? Well, low back disorders are commonly reported and are more expensive for employers than any other type of injury. Although the following statistics are from more than 10 years ago, they still have been found to be applicable. In a study by Anderson done in 1999, it was stated that approximately 70 to 85% of all individuals will experience back pain during some point of their lives. That's a lot. In another study done by Oakley in 2000, it was stated that workplace injuries are cumulative, developing over months and years of repeated physically stressful tasks such as lifting and heavy manual labor. Improper body mechanics while lifting can cause stress and strain on the muscles leading to pain or injury, especially in the back muscles and ligaments. In the 2012 news release by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, overexertion in lifting or lowering objects accounted for 12% of the total injuries and illness cases requiring days away from work. Additionally, for all occupations, the back was injured in 42% of the musculoskeletal disorders cases, requiring a median of seven days to recuperate. Now, <clears throat> you may be asking yourself what the difference is between stress and strain. In this case, stress does not mean the feeling you get towards the end of the semester when you have a B- and you need a B to pass grad level OT courses. Stress related to body mechanics refers to the internal deformation <coughs> in response to an externally applied load. While this may sound like a really technical definition, a good example that can help you to understand the concept is jumping rope which puts stress on the knee joints and ligaments, but does not cause immediate injury. Strain, on the other hand, is a change in dimension that occurs because of an external load. Again, an example to help demonstrate the meaning would be when lifting a heavy load too heavy for an individual causes mu muscle tension, which can lead to injury over time. What are some lifting considerations we should have when lifting objects? Liberty Mutual Insurance issued a manual about lifting, lowering, pushing, pulling, and carrying tasks. Bending is the first consideration. This is defined as any tasks that begin or ends with the hands below knuckle height. The deeper the bending motion, the greater is the physical stress on the lower back. Twisting is the second consideration and involves a motion that puts uneven forces on the back, thereby presenting additional physical stress. Reaching is the third consideration and involves the stress put on the shoulders, back, and arms due to an increased distance of an object to be lifted from the body. 
The fourth consideration is one-handed lifts and involves, obviously, lifting an object with one hand, which causes uneven loads on the back and presents greater physical stress. Therefore, it is important to have a secure two-hand grip on the objects that are being lifted. All of these things can lead to back injuries, causing an individual pain and even miss work days. And above all else, utilize the lifting technique that is most appropriate for the situation or circumstance. The semi-squat lift is the safest lift, but requires a larger amount of energy to complete. It is an ideal lift for heavy loads on an occasional basis, or about 10 to 33% of the workday. The squat lift can be used as an alternative to the semi-squat lift when there is limited space and the size of the load does not allow for the feet to be placed to the side of an object to be lifted. This type of lifting technique is usually preferred by individuals with acute and chronic low back pain. And finally, the stoop lift is used when an individual wishes to lift a relatively light load below 20 pounds on a more frequent basis, defined as 33 to 63% of the workday by the Department of Labor Dictionary of Occupational Titles. So now that we've talked about all of the bad things that can happen from improper body mechanics and several of the important techniques, it would probably be a good idea to discuss how to properly lift objects. Yes? First and foremost, you should always start in the safe position when lifting items from the floor. Before you lift a heavy object, think through your entire task. Decide where you'll place the object and how you'll get it there. If an object is too heavy to lift safely, find someone to help you. To lift an object from the floor, stand as close to the object as possible. Then kneel, resting one knee on the floor. Do not lift from a standing position with your waist bent or your knees locked. The next lifting technique involves maintaining the natural curve in your lower back. <clears throat> With one knee resting on the floor, tighten your core muscles, including the muscles in your abdomen, back, and pelvis, and lift the object between your legs. Maintain the natural curve in your lower back and don't hold your breath. Be careful to hold the object close to your body and rest the object on your knee as you prepare to stand. After resting the object on your knees, use your legs. As you stand, maintain the natural curve in your lower back and keep your core muscles tight. Use your legs, not your back, to lift the object. If you don't feel like kneeling to lift the object, you can squat instead. To do this, stand as close to the object as possible, positioning it between your knees as you squat. Keep your feet parallel, as shown here, or stagger one foot ahead of the other. It may also help to tilt one edge of the box up to ensure a firm hold. Again, even with squatting, let your legs do the work. Hold the object close to your body, maintain the natural curve in your lower back, and keep your core muscles tight. Use your leg muscles, not your back, to lift the object. And finally, avoid twisting. When you're standing and ready to move, continue holding the object close to your body to decrease the strain on your lower back. Continue to keep your core muscles tight. Turn by pivoting your feet, not your back. Avoid turning, twisting, and lifting heavy objects ab above your waist as much as possible. There are numerous lifting demonstrations available on YouTube. Use them to your advantage. Looks and sounds simple enough, and it is once you've got used to it. Let's run through it one more time to make sure. Test the weight. Stand facing the object with your feet shoulder width apart in a 10 to 2 position one foot slightly in front of the other. Keep the object squarely in front of you, no twisting. Lower yourself by bending at the knees. Remember, don't stoop, don't bend at the waist. Keep a naturally straight back. Grip the object in opposite corners with the palms of your hands. Keep the object as close to your body as possible, straighten knees and lift smoothly. Move slowly and steadily Keep looking ahead. With your feet in the 10 to 2 position, bend at the knees to lower the object. Finally, adjust the load later. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it and hope that it has provided some good information for 
proper body mechanics when lifting. And here are a list of references, any of which you can access online if you would like further information about how to use body mechanics and the proper lifting techniques. Thank you again for your time.